Hi, I'm Christine, and today we're talking about cruising to Alaska and Holland America. Hope you enjoy the video. If you do, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And also pop over to my Facebook page so you can see more stuff there. It's facebook.com forward slash flip flop travelers. Hi, so I'm Christine and I'm from escapes.ca and today we're talking about cruising Alaska and Holland America. Now I am going to show all of the, um, um, the as much as we can, we're going to talk about different stuff. And also I am going to post this to Facebook, uh, sorry, to YouTube later on. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up if you like what you see and don't forget to subscribe. Um, so we just got back from Alaska. We were sailing on the Holland America Euro Dam and I'm an inquisitive person. There are, I like to research my trips as much as I can ahead of time. And what I found really fundamentally frustrating was the lack of information that I could find on the internet. Specific stuff like um, finding out more details about the drink packages, what's included, that kind of thing. Um, can you use data, your, your own data, cellular data on the ship if you're close to shore? Um, uh, what kind of activities are available on board? I've done a fair amount of uh, repositioning cruises in the past, and I have to say that they are a far cry from what you would actually experience on a full proper cruise. Um, with a full length cruise, there are activities every day throughout the day, including the shows at night. There's usually three different musical things going on. Um, the main theater would have either a comedian or they had a magician one night um, or a dance show. And um, there's also uh, just different things throughout the ship. There was a bunch of different photography courses, which were really interesting, um, as well as some courses on like one OneNote and stuff like that. So computer type courses. And of course the casino is open as soon as you're 12 nautical miles offshore and in international waters or once you've left your um, the home um, country. Um, now a lot of people will say that the slot machines are not very friendly on board but we walked away with $1,200 so um, give it a whirl. Obviously um, you know bet within your limits here. Now I'm just checking at the same time to Make sure that this is working properly. We're looking pretty good here. Um, yeah, so let's just start off with some of the basics. So um, with the beverage package, it costs you $385 US for the drink package. That includes up to 15 alcoholic drinks. So it doesn't include um, if you want an espresso or a cappuccino or a frosted coffee. Um, those would all be an extra cost, and those are not included um, in, the, in the cruise fare, but if you buy one of the beverage packages, that is included. So that's a nice um, benefit if you like your fancy coffees. And also, you can get a glass of water at the buffet, um, or in the restaurants, of course, but if you wanted to grab a bottle of water for your daily three laps around the ship, because that makes a mile, um, so you can get some exercise that way. Um, if you wanted a bottle of water for that, or if you wanted um, a bottle of water, you're allowed to take that offshore um, when you're in, in port to do any excursions. That would cost $3.25 per bottle. So it all adds up really quickly. Um, so I did a comparison on the drink packages and just thought to see how it would work out. Now, the drink package works out to basically 55 bucks a day, US. So by comparison, when you look at the cost of drinks on board the ship, as I mentioned, a bottle of water, that's a 500 milliliter bottle, is three and a quarter. Um, the average price for, for beers, and that would be a bottle of beer, would be between seven and 25 and 750. Spirits, roughly the same. Wine started at $9 and went up from there, depending on what you liked. I actually really enjoyed the um, the white wine on board. It was the cheapest one that they had at $9 a pop. And it was the St. Michelle Mimi Chardonnay. 
and I liked it. I enjoyed it so much. I actually came home and bought a bottle and to buy it at the liquor store here, it is $22 Canadian. So for $9 on board the ship, it's actually, you're getting a, a decent bottle of wine. And I, I just really enjoyed the flavor. And, and you know, to each their own, everybody's got a different um, taste and appreciation. But if you work it out and you think, well, you're gonna get up in the morning, have a couple of bottles of water. I like to take a bottle of water to bed to sleep with. Um, with the air conditioning, I find I really need to stay hydrated. Um, so if you have a couple of bottles of water throughout the course of the day, um, maybe get up in the morning, have breakfast and maybe a mimosa, because that's a nice way to kick off um, your vacation day. Um, those are $3.95. Um, and then if you wait till happy hour, if you don't buy the drink package, they do have happy hour twice a day on board Holland America. They have um, in the Tamarind, the Asian um, restaurant lounge from 3.30 till 4.30 every day is happy hour. Happy hour means you pay full price for the first drink and then you get your second drink for just $2 more. So it's a considerable discount. Um, so let's say you had a couple of beers during the first happy hour and then you wanted to carry on that party because you're on vacation and hit the second happy hour. That's up in the crow's nest at the front on the upper floor. So you've got spectacular views of the ocean and the port around you depending on where you are and uh, let's say you have a couple of beers there and then maybe you have two glasses of wine in the evening one with dinner and then one afterwards now i know i saw people on board the ship that pretty much had a drink in hand at all times and i'm not going to say that i didn't um, um exceed this example um but right there with the added service charge on top of that because you're paying 15 percent gratuity on every single drink that you have, whether it's a coffee or a bottle of water. Um, that basically that example of two waters, a mimosa, four beers and two wines in one day adds up to 54 bucks US versus the drink package where you've got unlimited water, unlimited coffees, unlimited pop is included um, as well as your drinks and that's 55 a day. So why wouldn't you, you know, then you just don't have to worry. You're not going to get any surprises at the end. Um, I mistakenly thought that the drink package at 385, which I prepaid, it works out to about 500 Canadian. I thought that, I assumed that there would be gratuities on top of that because that's the way it works with most other cruise lines. With Holland America, the gratuities are included in that already. So when you consider that, it works out to a really, really good value for money. If you've got any questions as we go, feel free to post them. And I'll be happy to answer. And if you have questions later on, you can also post them and I'll answer them as we go or afterwards. So that's the drink package on Hall in America. Um, so that worked out really well. I would, I would highly recommend that. Um, now we cruised outside. We didn't do the inside passage. So we went up the outside of Vancouver Island from Seattle. And the reason I chose a Seattle departure as opposed to an easier Vancouver one, hop on the SkyTrain, boom, downtown, off we go. Um, I chose Seattle because it had a better itinerary. So the, obviously with cruising, the most important thing is what the itinerary is. And this particular one included Glacier Bay, which is absolutely stunning. Um, now I've just posted a video on YouTube, which you can see, um, if you go to my channel, it's YouTube dot com forward slash Christine Turner. Super easy. Um, so I did a little montage video of us cruising in Alaska and the views were pretty spectacular. I mean, let's be honest, Alaska, having lived in Vancouver, greater Vancouver for most of my life, it's really similar. You know, we saw bears. Well, I saw bears the last time I drove to Vernon. Um, we saw, well, I didn't, I've never seen mountain goats before. That was unique. Um, people were like, whoa, look at that bald eagle. We see them all the time. They nest in the trees right beside our house. Um, so that kind of stuff wasn't overly fascinating, although it was nice to see in their natural environment. And on that video clip, I did see there's a family of um, a mama bear and three little cubs, and they were chasing each other and playing on the beach and tackling each other. So that was quite nice. The glacier, on the other hand, that was just speechless. Um, amazing. Um, it's fascinating to see the massive ice flow and how it's pushed, pushed, pushed down the mountain and then to the water's edge. And then we were lucky enough because it was at the end of the season where there seems to be a little bit more 
activity on the glaciers that when we first pulled into Glacier Bay, and this is something that's important to know, um, they open up the front desk decks, so you can go on deck five or deck six, and you can actually stand right on the bow, and you can be out in the open air and watch um, as you're going into Glacier Bay. That bay, that is a national park, and they only actually allow two ships in at one time um, because they're conscious of um, the environmental effects, and there's a specific speed um, maximum that they can go. So you're really going slowly in. Along the way, they pick up one of, a couple of park rangers who come onto the overhead um, um, uh PA system and they explain different things along the way. Now we brought binoculars. If you book into a suite, they are provided in your cabin, um, but I would bring them just in case. Um, and uh, you know, he would say, well, if you're facing the front of the boat and turn to the, um, the starboard side, which is the right hand side of the ship, and you look at about two o'clock, you'll see a family of bears in the, on the, um, beach, you know, that kind of thing. So he's really good at directing us and telling us um, what we could see and being an eagle eye and spotting different stuff. Um, it was really cool to be outside. Definitely for Alaska, you want to go the layers route. Waterproof, windproof, because it's always windy, um, and warmth. So if it's dry, which we were so fortunate to have, um, we were able to sit out on the deck and it was chilly, but it was beautiful and sunny. And actually it was a little bit not great in the morning, a little bit overcast. But by the time we had gone through Glacier Bay and into Johns Hopkins Glacier, which is just mountains surrounding you, you're in the middle of this bay and the sun was shining. It was absolutely glorious. So um, don't worry about going at the end of the season. It doesn't mean that your weather is going to be terrible. Um, it just might be. A little bit more rainy than the rest of the year um, but if you go after September begins then you're outside of school season so in terms of um, having a more adult cruising experience um, you can certainly um, know that that will be the case now when you were uh, when we were out on the deck and we were seeing the glaciers they actually had um, pea soup that they came around with which I didn't like but my husband loved it um, and then they had a bar open, so you could have some Alaska beer, and they had some mulled wine, um, and uh, some other different, oh, and they had hot, hot chocolate as well. Um, so they had different things available for you, and then again, the captain's coming on, um, the park ranger's coming on, and giving you information as we were cruising and seeing um, the glaciers. And when you come into Glacier Bay, when you come into the first major glacier, which is Marjorie Glacier, it's about, well, look, the Norwegian Joy, which is an 11 story, 13 story, something like that, um, cruise ship. It's massive. It holds 4,000 people. And the glacier was a bit, bit, little bit higher than the cruise ship. Um, so that kind of gives you perspective on it. I'd say it was about a mile, mile and a half wide. And when we first came in, they come into the bay. So anybody on this side of the ship is going to see... The glacier and then what the captain does is he slowly rotates so that anybody on the right side or the starboard side is able to see the same thing um, when we first came in on the left or port side of the ship it was calving like crazy like just just about non-stop and there were some big bits that we we're like oh I bet you that bits gonna go and you'd wait five minutes and then you'd hear this massive crack like thunder and lightning and you'd see it just falling into the sea and then the big splash. So that part was really cool, really um, interesting to see. And then, like I said, we went into the other bays and, um, and saw, you know, more glaciers along the way, the John Hopkin Johns Hopkins Glacier, and uh, as well, got lots of fascinating information. And they also provide a lot of paper information in your cabin um, about Glacier Bay, um, and information about the park and stuff like that. And additionally, they have um, talks about the next destination each day. So the day before, you can go and learn about Sitka or Ketchikan or Juneau and find out, you know, what, what, you, what there is to do there. Um, in Juneau, we took the easy route and we went and found a pub. Um, actually had 
the most fabulous appetizer I've ever had, which was just deep fried battered jalapenos. Absolutely delicious. Um, and then in the other ports, we kind of just walked around and <clears throat> saw the shops and, and the sites. And it was just really interesting to see the little towns and how they were laid out and, um, and just seeing how, how, what they looked like. Um, it's certainly not, you know, you wouldn't book a trip to Sitka, I don't think, um, just to see Sitka, but to see it on route to the glaciers was pretty cool. Um, my favorite port was Ketchikan out of all of them. Just felt quirky and had neat little shops and bars and um, Creek Street is this area which they've sort of restored. Um, when the gold miners first came out, they had all these little shops and saloons and stuff like that along the water, along the river. And they even had a, um, a brothel. <laughs> so they've restored this. And you can actually do a tour into the into the um, the building, and there's a woman out there. I think they charge 15 bucks or something like that to do a tour. I didn't opt for this, but she's all dressed up in the garb, and um, you know it was it was quite interesting. Um, and then lots of different shops and stuff like that. No, this was basically the last cruise ship, uh, the last sailing for the Eurodown, which we were on, into. Alaska so like everything was on sale so 75% off stuff on board the ship that kind of thing what was different is um, to compare to different cruise ships is hi Rana um, they didn't they had a bit of a sale for um, booze duty-free but unlike um, princess ships where I've seen like massive blowouts and big sales where they've got booze stacked up and it's an actual sale um, they didn't really have that on this one, um, but uh, as I say, you know, the merchandise was all on sale, um, and uh, what else? Oh, and in the ports, everything is on sale because it's September, they're basically, it's the last sailings of the season, so, um, you know, good deals on fleece jackets and stuff like that. Um, now, also I wanted to talk about things like data, so in ports, we, I bought a, da a data package. I, I bought it ahead of time. Um, it was $111 US, and that was for the premium package. And when you pre-buy the data plan, you just get the most, um, the top package. Unfortunately, when you're on board the ship, it's a bit like dial-up. Um, so there was one day I had tried to do some Instagram stories, and it took a day and a half to post them. So... Um, just bear in mind that if you're cruising and specifically cruising Alaska where you're not, you'll have times where you're not anywhere near a city. Um, you can do email, you can do messenger, um, but really to post photos is difficult. To post video, impossible. Um, but of course, going to the U.S., depending on what your mobile carrier is, it's about $7 a day if you want to roam like home once you get into port. Um, we talked about the different classes that they had and, and activities on board. The gym was actually really good. Went there three times. Um, they had everything from elliptical, um, elliptical machines, um, uh, to treadmills, to recumbent bikes, to regular bikes. They do have a spin bike class, but there's a cost for that. They had yoga and Pilates classes, again, a cost for that, um, uh, if you just want to go and work out, they had all kinds of weight machines, as well as free weights, as well as the yoga and Pilates equipment. So if you know what you're doing, you can certainly grab your mat um, and the yoga, um, the the BOSU balls, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, um, what other questions did I have initially? So when you sail up, oh, um, so when we sailed up, we did the we didn't do the inside passage. We sailed outside of Vancouver Island. Consequently, crazy rough seas. Um, so much so that the captain at one point actually came on the, the speaker because it was literally like, ooh, ooh, and everybody was getting sick. Um, I went to the um, customer service desk and asked if they had the, you know, you can get those wristbands, um, which are supposed to be good for motion sickness. They don't sell them on the ship, but they were freely handing out Dramamine. So she gave me three packets of two tablets each. Um, and 
the captain, as I say, he actually came on board and he said that he was diverting the route. Um, it was going to be 20 miles longer, but what he did is he wanted to avoid the extra waves. So he went um, inside at Haida Gwaii and we kind of did the inside, inside passage there. And the, it did considerably calm down. Having said that, it was still quite, quite rough. So he called ahead to um, Juno, I believe it was, at Juno. And instead of us getting in um, at 6 a.m. for a 7 a.m. departure, he actually called ahead, woke up the port, portmaster? I don't know what you call them. Um, they then woke up their crew, who, who would have all been home sleeping at 2.30 in the morning, and he said, we're coming in. Um, so we actually docked at 2.30 a.m. so that we could be hooked up to the dock, smooth, and um, um, and have much um, more stable a situation so we could sleep. Um, so cheers to Captain Scott for that. Thank you very much. So it's nice to know that the cruise ships have that liberty to reroute um, where needed. Um, um, we talked about drinks. Um, oh, now the drink package that I mentioned, that was basically 55 bucks a day. That includes anything up to $11. Now there's a little bit of confusion on this and a little bit of mixed feelings. I think it depends on the ship as to what happens if you order a drink that's $12. So for example, one day I decided, and I'll show you the picture here, um, to order a, a special drink of the day and it was $12. Now it's difficult to tell on the, um, on the room bill, what they actually, how they charged it because we did have other charges that day. Um, but that was the drink. There you go. It was absolutely delicious. I forget what it was called. Um, but it was kind of a Prosecco slash strawberry slash something else mix. Quite refreshing, tasty, but it was $12. So typically what they would do is, well, they either charge you a dollar for the difference because your $55 package includes any drinks up to $11 per drink, um, or they would just charge you the whole amount. Now I was told anything that's above $11, it's outside of your 15 drinks and outside of the $55 or out of the 15 drinks and out of the $11 thing. Um, and that it would just be charged in full. Um, but then it didn't really show up that way on our bill. So I'm not really sure. And I've seen a bunch of different YouTube videos where people have tried to discern this and it, it seems to vary by ship. So um, just know if you're going to buy a drink that's more than $11, you're either going to pay for it in full or you're going to just pay the difference. Who, who knows? Um, Jason's just asked, how was the cuisine? Fabulous. I mean, like I said, I've done repositioning cruises before um, where they've been one, two, three days. And you know, we've done the specialty dining, we've done the main dining room, we've done the little snackage, like pizzas, um, burger stands, that kind of thing. It was, you know, it was okay. I didn't have huge expectations. I mean, I've, you guys all know me. I'm, a, I'm the all-inclusive queen. I've been to 250 resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean. Um, and I've been to five-star resorts that are like $800 a night. And I've been to three-star resorts that are, well, I just won't go there. Um, and in the past, I've always thought that cruise ship food was mediocre. Um, sometimes great, sometimes just okay. Mostly just okay. On Holland America, the not the cuts that they use, but the, the options that they give you and the variety of choices was amazing. Also buco, lamb chops, um, duck. I didn't have it, but my husband did. He said it was good. Um, roast chicken was probably the most pedestrian thing that um, we had the whole week. Um, they have various cuts of steak from prime rib to uh, filet. Um, they do offer a tomahawk steak and it's 75 bucks uh, extra. So just like they're doing at a lot of resorts now at, um, for example, Grand Velas in um, Los Cabos, they offer a tomahawk steak, but there's a surcharge for that. So similar situation on board to Holland America, uh, you can have that, that massive, massive steak. I think it's like 30 ounces or something, 24 ounces maybe. Uh, supposedly for two people, for me, that would be six meals. Um, 
but it's supposed to be quite the experience and um, the fact that they offer it is great. Lobster was included. Um, they do surf and turf, um, shrimp. Um, so the, like I said, overall the quality of what they were offering was a little bit higher level than um, than what you would normally expect to see on a cruise ship. Um, but even the junk food was good. <laughs> like, we had pizzas the one day. Um, they have this place called the Dive In, which is like um, Nathan's Hot Dogs or um, or an A and W. They had burgers and they had or like a white spot because they had special sauce. Um, they had burgers and they had hot dogs. Um, and I actually I really like the burgers. They come wrapped up in that tin foil paper that's kind of like, well, maybe for you young people you won't know, but like. Back in the day when we were young, you'd go to the fair and you'd get a burger that was juicy and onions and it was wrapped up in that tinfoil paper. So maybe that's why I like it so much. It just brings back um, fond memories. But it was actually really good. Um, nice flavor to it. Um, what else? Oh, the other thing I really loved, of course, they had the buffet and we only ate there a couple of times because um, they don't find the buffet to be a relaxing experience. And by the time you get your food, sit down. I mean, I love the fact that you can control your portions, but they're so hygiene focused that you don't scoop your own food for the most part. They scoop it for you. So you go to the pasta counter and they are scooping and placing. So for breakfast, for example, if you ask for bacon, you're going to get a heap load of bacon. If you only want a couple of pieces, you have to be very specific and precise when you request and it was no problem. I learned that trick the first day. And then three days later, when I had the breakfast at the buffet again, I specifically said I just wanted two slices of bacon and two slices or two pieces of sausage. They have four kinds of sausage. Like they had, um, it was like a turkey sausage, uh, regular breakfast sausage, um, the sausage rounds and something else, regular bacon, turkey bacon, I mean, it's just something for everybody. Um, no problems with food allergies, um, gluten-free, celiac, um, whatever. They will accommodate anything. Um, and the thing that I really loved the most was sometimes I'd, we would have breakfast. And if it was a sit-down breakfast, it tends to be a little bit more. I'll show you another picture of this fabulous breakfast that we had. Um, and so the portions can be a little bit bigger, but now I'm not going to find it easily. Um, so the portions can be a little bit bigger. So sometimes we wouldn't necessarily want a whole lunch and would just simply sit down and have, um, want something like quick and easy to go. Well, so here's an example of, oh, that's a video. There we go. So that was breakfast one day. That was fantastic. Um, you can add extra sides if you want. That was breakfast another day. Mimosa. Bing. Um, so light lunch, getting back to this. They have grab and go sandwiches at the buffet. It was awesome. They had like four different kinds of sandwiches and you could get, um, like they did a, uh, egg salad sandwich with bacon. It's kind of cool. Um, and they're small, you know, like sort of that size, like a uh, hot dog bun size, I would say. Um, and um, you just help yourself. And they also had a um, sort of deli station nearby where you could get extra, you'd get fruits. And you could also get um, they a cheese tray and a meat tray. So if you wanted to, if you just got a regular vegetal, vegetable sandwich, you could always throw some meat on there. Or if you got a... a sandwich that was fairly lean like a slice of ham and a little bit of cheese you could always chuck some more meat in there and chuck some more cheese in there too so that was really great for like I say grab and go um oh and the desserts oh my goodness I am not a particularly big person for desserts I, I'm not big on the sweets um but they were amazing and there was a birthday on board so somebody got um, not only a, a cupcake happy birthday thing delivered to the room but we went for dinner ate our food absolutely stuffed decided no we're passing on dessert but they knew it was a birthday so 
sitting in the room an hour later and knock, knock, knock on the door and we open it up and they've said that, oh, there was a cake from the restaurant where we had just had dinner and they brought it in for us. And it wasn't huge. It was maybe, you know, uh, four inches wide by four, it was a square, uh, four by four. Um, and you know, about an inch thick. Oh, it was good. So good. So good. Um, and they had other stuff, donuts and all that kind of stuff, ice cream, um, cookies. I mean, you'd see people that are just going in for a, a snack and they'd come out with like 10 cookies. Um, <laughs> I think that when you cruise, you have to be careful about how much you're consuming because I mean when we walk by people in the buffet at breakfast you know you could do a quick mental calorie count and I'm thinking 1500 calories per plate is what most people were eating and they might have two plates of food um, so remember three laps of the veranda the promenade deck one mile three laps easy enough to do so at least you can burn off your calories or like I said hit that gym because it was really good um, they did have two formal nights on board. So a seven night cruise, you can have two formal nights. The formal nights are on the days that you're at sea. So whatever day is the longest that you're not in port. Um, when we went down to, when we did our cruise, we were doing the, um, we came outside and then went up to, um, Glacier Bay and so on the way back, we had to stop in Victoria, BC, because it's a it's a rule that you can't do a cruise that's closed loop. You can't do just US to US. You have to stop in a foreign country. So we stopped in Victoria on the last night of the cruise. So it was 6 p.m. until like midnight. It wasn't a huge amount of time. Um, but so that was considered our formal night um, as well. Formal night means they want you to wear long pants for men, collared shirts as well. Um, they recommend a suit and a tie. I mean, there were people that were dressed up, like seriously dressed up. I'm on vacation, man. Like people who know me know I like literally my Facebook page is called the flip flop trips. I live in flip flops. I think they're $80 flip flops, but they're flip flops. Um, so I did have to take them off for that dinner. Um, closed toed shoes for men. Um, but for women were easy, right? Like you wear a nice shirt. Um, dress up your jewelry, that kind of thing, um, in a skirt or pants. Um, jeans were able to be worn in the main dining room every other night. If you eat in the main dining room for breakfast, it seemed like there was no dress code at all. Um, but you know, just look nice, right? And otherwise, you know, the buffet is wide open if you are just going super cash. Um, Scott's asking about ordering drinks to the room with room service as part of the drink package, not included. And of course your room comes with a mini bar and it is fully stocked. Um, oh, the water was like six bucks a bottle. So in desperation one night, cause we'd forgotten to go to the bar to get a bottle of water to take with us. And of course you don't want to be drinking the tap water. That's just gross. Cause the water's in those stored containers. It's like drinking a glass of water from an airplane. Um, so bottled water we did, um, but for the most part, we like, otherwise we didn't touch the mini bar. Now with Holland America, you are allowed to bring on one bottle per person, 750 milliliters of wine. Um, that's no problem. There's no charge. And that's for your enjoyment in your stateroom. Now, if you're going to go to Alaska, you've got to get a balcony or what they call a veranda. Um, because there's so many times when you're sailing along and you can see the land like you don't need binoculars you can see everything binoculars help um, especially if you're looking for wildlife um, but yeah you've got to go with a veranda so it's nice to sit out there and have a cup of coffee in the morning you can order your room service um, or just sit out there with a glass of wine is quite nice so like i said one bottle of wine per person is allowed to be brought on at the beginning of the cruise not allowed to bring on anything from port if you buy any alcohol import, they will hold it for you until the end of the cruise. Um, and also at the beginning of the cruise, if you do bring on more wine, that is allowed. However, you will pay corkage on any additional bottles. And then of course you can enjoy them in the main dining room with your dinner. I think corkage was $18 US per bottle. So, you know, sometimes that might be more than the bottle of wine that you get. Um, 
there is in the crow's nest that upper area it's like a lounge with um, a coffee shop they did a lot of presentations in there and mostly just loungy chairs it was where everybody went not only for happy hour but also just to hang out and they had puzzles everywhere they had huge tables and people would just randomly sit down and they'd be doing puzzles together so that was really cool they have games everywhere around the ship um, and also it's a it's a great place for reading a book and they did have books everywhere um, it's sort of a book well, they said not to do, not to take any of the books out um, but from the beginning of the cruise when we got on and we got on really early and went straight around the ship to get oriented um, there were um, less books there when we started than when we left so I think it's um, so anyways just saying that um, also down on the main deck by the casino there's the gallery bar which is full of different paintings again if you which I mentioned earlier if you go back to my YouTube videos um, you'll see the one that I've just posted which has um, a quick shot of I believe it has a quick shot of the, the gallery bar and there's backgammon tables there's a bunch of different games as well as a whole cupboard of games for you to sit and play so lots of stuff to do on board the ship there's music trivia one day you're not winning prizes or anything but it's just fun stuff to do um, we decided to go to the music trivia and he said oh thanks for coming and we had such a good time on this yesterday yesterday we did 80s music trivia and today we're gonna do 50s music trivia we didn't get up and leave but we didn't really get any answers right so that was unfortunate um, so you do want to take a look at the schedule of what's happening it comes to your cabin the night before and you can kind of plan out your day and figure out what you want to do um, specialty dining so there's different restaurants on board um, there was an Asian and Italian a steakhouse a steak restaurant and a seafood and these would all be an extra cost um, the first night of the cruise they actually had a sale on with the tamarind which was the Asian and for that we I think we got 15% off um, so that was a really good deal and the food was spectacular oh I'm going to show you that burger so remember I was talking about that quick and easy food junk food well that's the burger that I had at the dine in dine out dive out place um, now I took most of these on my other camera but all you can eat sashimi just saying um did do anything else that was the pizza on board so it was really good and just to give you an idea of the glacier I'll go ahead and show you a picture here oh, I've got to show you this too you know when you order a Caesar from the restaurants especially here in Vancouver it's all a big deal you get like a um, pepperoni and olives and all that kind of stuff well that's a Holland America Caesar so you got shrimp you got three stuffed olives it's very yummy and it's a recyclable straw um, where else do I want to show you oh here we go so that was one of the bays that we went into so as you can see it's all very majestic um, did I take a picture of the yeah I did there's a picture of the glacier so it's absolutely huge and take a picture of the first one so as I mentioned before so you can see there's there's the Norwegian joy and just beside it is the glacier right there so it's huge it, it's hard to get perspective on it I know uh, my colleagues Scott and Jason they just sailed to Alaska um, a few weeks ago and I was so excited I was watching the deck cam and the particular ship they were on the Crystal Symphony Crystal Symphony I think it was Crystal anyways um, they had um, a cam in the front a cam in the back a cam on the side both sides so I was checking it out and like oh I was so excited to see the glacier and we got there and I thought well this looks pretty small but it's just it's very difficult to get a sense of the size of it and it was truly truly massive so I definitely would recommend that um, Wi-Fi packages um, now our ship we're on the Eurodam it has 2,000 people getting on and off the ship piece of cake seriously no problem at all 
the um, if you were mobility challenged um, at one of the ports when we came into port they were at low tide and when we left at noon leaving Ketchikan um, we left at high tide and so the boat had raised so much that the the gangplank was at about a 30 degree angle so for the people who were in wheelchairs um, they didn't rely they made them not rely on their partners or their travel companions to push them up the ramp. They actually had staff porters um, of the ship who were doing the heavy lifting and, and helping them up because they know what they're doing. They've done it a thousand times and they're used to doing that angle. So they'd have one person in front, one person in beha behind pushing them up. So it was really good to see that um, it was a just a well-oiled machine. But seriously, like, going off the ship was no problem. I mean, we didn't race to be the first people off and we certainly didn't wait to be the last people on. Um, and we did have two people who missed that whole, like, get on board by 1230 because we are leaving. Um, the captain made the announcement so many times. They do a huge honk of the horn when it's getting ready to leave. And we saw a few people running up to the port and, and they, they are up, up to the, the gangplank and they, and they got there in time. But there were, we were watching as we sailed away. Nobody's like screeching to a stop and coming up in a taxi. Nobody running to the port. Um, but there were two people that got left behind. And so in that situation, it's their own dime to get to the next port or to get back to the original, um, um, the r original departure point. So I guess Alaska Airlines got a little bit of extra business that day. And that's what happens. Um... There were lots of outlets in the room, um, not tons of storage. Actually, I will say there was tons of storage space. It was a bit tricky. In the closets, the cupboards, they have shelves that fold down. So it depends how much stuff you want to hang. Um, you could store your suitcase under the bed, which was great. And they also had a couple more storage bins under the bed. So you just have to kind of economize what you're doing. But there was two drawers on the bedside table on each side of the bed. Two big... Um, baskets under the bed which you could put stuff in and then as well uh, one full closet for each person um, so there was plenty of space so that wasn't really a problem at all so i'm going to wrap this up and i'm going to tell you that um, we are actually hosting a cruise next year we are going on the Cunnings Dam from round trip vancouver through the inside passage up to glacier bay we're going to be stopping in skagway ketchikan and juno and uh, so you can try those jalapenos that i mentioned um, and um, basically, it's a beer and bites cruise. So with this cruise, you're going to get a minimum $200 per person U.S. shipboard credit. Um, as well, you get a free dinner at the Pinnacle Grill. And um, I'm going to be throwing some other stuff in. I'm going to—I think I'm going to do a pub crawl for each person. So working out the details on that. If you book within the next uh, by next Friday, there are some extra inclusions that you're going to get. We also have a special cocktail party for the group. And for this, prices start at $13.71 per person Canadian. And this is my pricing. This is tax in, right? All in price. $13.71 for an inside cabin. Ocean view is $19.56. But we talked about that. You're gonna get a balcony, right? So for an extra 70 bucks, balcony cabin, 2021. Um, and then you can get into suites for $2,500. So it just depends how much you want to spend and how much space you want. Personally, I think as long as you've got a veranda or a balcony, you've got everything you need. You've got lots of space for yourself. And um, you'll be able to see everything you need to see. So hopefully you can join us on that. I'm also going to be having a cruise night in three weeks' time. So I'm going to post more details about that below. And if you have any questions about Cruising Alaska or about Holland America Line, feel free to ask it below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for tuning in today. And if you have any questions, like I said, let me know. If you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, give us a thumbs up and we'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.